Hey YouTube. So I've got the B pillar camera uh, on the outside of the car like I've done before. Here's a quick image of it. What I intend on doing today is trying to show a little bit more about visibility and maybe a little less about how the car handles it. Uh, so I don't have a destination set at the moment. I've got a, an occluded intersection here with a stop line and I'll try to show a little bit more um, about what the car can see. Now because I don't have a destination in right now it's not showing the full view so I will put a destination in here. so that when I engage full self-driving, it'll expand the screen. Because what I want to show is a little bit more about the 3D view and what cars can be seen at different vantage points. All right, so there it's engaged. And what I want to show, here's the stop line and here's the 3D view as best I can. Okay, and the car went for it and it was clear now I'm gonna stop here and show you a little bit more. All right, there, I'm beyond the stop line. My car is just about in the edge of the street. Uh, I, I perhaps could go forward about another, that's about as far forward as I can go in this particular intersection. And if you see where I am, I'm beyond the stop line and I'm, and I'm mapped on the other side. Excuse me. And then now I'll, I'll spin it around for the 3D bird's eye view. And you can kind of see here a little bit. There's an oncoming car. That's a good example there. A couple more oncoming cars. And I got a set of traffic coming. So I'm just going to stay here at this intersection and let this manifest itself a little bit more. And then one more time and then I'll let the car proceed. Okay. I've engaged. I'm going to press the accelerator to get it going. And we'll do a couple more. Okay, here we are at our second intersection. Uh, I'm not going to have a, uh, a destination in here, so the view won't be as wide, but it at least uh, lets me stop and, and show the view as the cars are oncoming without having autopilot engaged and trying to proceed. All right, so we got a stop sign here with a labeled divided highway. You can see the mapped uh, crosswalk and the stop line. So I'm gonna creep up here manually and right there is the stop line, which is where the car would stop on its own. And you can see a little bit to the left, uh, there is no oncoming traffic. Oh, there's a couple cars coming here in a second. Um, and you'll start to see them come into view. Pretty late, actually. Um, so if that's a real representation of when it sees them, it is a little bit late. Uh, but you can see it doesn't draw much past there. So I'm gonna scoot up a little bit more and hold this here. All right, now I'm a little bit beyond the stop line, but I'm not in the street. I'm in a safe location. And if you see here, that's pretty well mapped. I'm in the crosswalk, but I'm not left. I'm gonna scoot up a little bit further and that's a pretty good representation of the angle of the intersection um, and the oncoming traffic. I, I think the B-pillar camera in this position uh, on this particular road with that curve could poss possibly do it uh, as long as it was actually identifying the traffic. Okay, I've got three more cars coming, so I'm just gonna stay here for another second longer. Okay, I think that was a pretty good example. We'll try to go get another one. Okay, here's our third intersection. Those of you that watched a few of my videos, you're probably starting to recognize these intersections. Uh, it's a divided highway. I do have a median uh, here on the left side. 
uh, and a leafless crepe myrtle tree that is kind of right in the way at the stop line. So once again, I'm doing this manually. I'm gonna go up to the stop line as the car would stop on its own. And that is the stop line position. And I'll uh, try to show you here on the bird's eye view again a little bit. Okay, I'm at the stop sign. It is mapping all of this correctly. And I'm gonna creep forward manually and try to improve this view on both the B pillar and uh, both for my eyes. And this is a pretty accurate representation. Uh, it looks like I'm just now crossing the crosswalk and I am. All right, I'm gonna keep creeping out to try to not get in the road. And that's about as far as I should go before I get in the road. I've got a truck right behind me, so I can't really stay here as long as the last one. But I'll wait for this traffic to clear and I'll hold it for you. Okay, there we go. I thought that was a pretty good example. Let's go find some stop signs. Okay, this is a really good example because this is the first stop sign coming out of my house. Uh, and there's a very dangerous intersection to the left because about a block to the left, there's a street light where cars come zipping across very quickly. So if I'm taking a left or even going straight through this uh, stop sign, looking left here is a very dangerous intersection because cars come very, very quickly. So once again, I'm just gonna go up to the intersection and stop at the stop line. And I'm gonna spin this around. Sorry, I'm not getting very good at this yet. All right, and I'm gonna creep forward and take a peek. Now there's, there's a truck coming from the right at the moment and that is being represented there. So I'm gonna take a peek forward and you see that Sago Palm is right in my lane of sight. I cannot see down the intersection. So I'm gonna creep forward a little bit further, a little bit further. Now I can see uh, down the, the uh, intersection to the left um, and then I'm gonna proceed through the stop sign and right about there you can see with the B pillar camera what it looks like. Let's go find some more. Okay, here's another intersection heading out on uh, to the highway. It's uh, a divided highway, the same one as before, just from a different perspective. I haven't shown this one quite as many times. All right, I'm gonna go up to the stop line and I'll show you how when there are no obstructions, I think the B-pillar camera is adequate. All right, so right here, I'm at the stop line and I'm gonna creep forward just a little bit more, but you can see, I can see pretty far down because there's no bushes, no shrubs until you get about a hundred yards down. All right, and right there you can see it's nice and clear, both visually and probably with the B-pillar. And I'll take a right turn. Okay, this is a rural intersection. Um, I'm probably not gonna get to show you any traffic here, but what I wanna show you is kind of the, the look back left angle here. Um, you can see here on the visualization, it's got it mapped pretty pretty accurately right now. Uh, so I'm gonna creep up to the stop sign and I'm, I'm pivoting it back to the left. We've got some pedestrians coming up from the right. Uh, but there, I think you can see clearly and I creep and go. Here's a good example of a very low density intersection where traffic is usually not a problem, but I think this makes the case for how a full level five autonomy system is going to have to handle situations and accept some risk or completely reroute around the problem. So here I am at the stop sign. Obviously I can now creep forward. Um, and according to the map and I'm right at the edge. So if there was a car coming from the left, you'd have to kind of be looking through the trees and come out and just kind of take the risk and turn and hopefully uh, nobody be coming or they saw your car entering into the road. 
Now coming up here is probably the most complicated intersection I've tested so far. It's a six-way street with a four-way stop sign. One, two, three, four coming from the angle and the, and the cars coming this way have the right-of-way. But the problem is, is the stop sign for this first intersection is well before you can see down the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed to the stop sign and the stop line, which is right there. And you can see I'm stopped at the stop line, but the road it needs to protect itself on is coming from this direction. So I'm going to creep forward as a human would and just kind of show you the visibility. Now normally the car starts proceeding right about now, but I'm gonna let it peak a little bit manually. So right about there is where as a human I would make the decision uh, whether it's clear or not because my eyes can see and then I could proceed on out into the intersection and go. There's no traffic to see at that one, uh, but at least you could see what the car was mapping. Okay, we're coming up at the same intersection, but from the opposite direction now. So we're going to look back to the left this direction uh, and, and see how it maps it out. It's a little bit less occluded from this side. The stop line matches up a little bit more closely with the perspective you need to make a safe decision. But you can see how it's mapping this median, and it has had trouble uh, deciding whether or not it could cross that median or not. Now, there's an oncoming car you can see. I can see perfectly clear from this perspective um, to decide. Here's another view from the right. There was a car coming. And now, again, from the left, there's another car coming. Okay. And then I will proceed. Manually. All right, well, I think that kind of made my point. I'm going to go back and try to put this video together, and hopefully, uh, the time coding will match up. I just want to give a few shout outs to some of the folks that have been making comments on the videos, they really helped me. Uh, a special shout out to uh, at coding Mark. Mark, you've, you've really been uh, supportive and I appreciate you uh, both making thoughtful comments on Twitter and on YouTube. Um, they help uh, a whole lot. If you like the videos, let me know in the comments. If you got any ideas for different uh, angles or perspectives that you think would help formulate your own opinions on, on the progress of FSD Beta. This is FSD Beta 8. Um, leave it in the comments and I'll try to do my best.